All right, so this is the start of our second half of the videos here. It says a cheetah runs at 15 meters per second, jumps horizontally off of a hill as it pounces on its lunch. It says lunch is a gazelle standing 25 meters away. So this is going to be a good jump here. And it says determine the vertical distance it jumped from and the time it took the cheetah to land on the gazelle. It says you can assume this gazelle had no idea what was happening and just stood there. So it's a complete surprise. So 15 meters per second is pretty fast. That might be reasonable for a cheetah. We'll find out. Go ahead, pause the video, draw a picture of what's going on here. All right, so your drawing should look something like this. I've got my cheetah up here at the top. I've got the gazelle down here at the bottom. And this is actually, it's, it's a small drawing with 25 meters right here. Um, it's just not enough room on this page for me to do a drawing that's a little bit larger here. I normally draw that up a little bit further. But 25 meters here, the cat's going to jump down on top of that gazelle down here. Now remember, the main thing is that you've drawn it similar to this. You don't have to draw this as well as I've done. Just because you're not an artist like I am doesn't mean you can't complete this problem. Okay? So draw something almost as good as this and something down here to show, like, hey, it's an object going like that. All right? Now, I want you to try to draw right out the givens and the unknowns. So pause the video and do that, please. All right, so your givens and your unknowns should look something like this right here. You know that the initial velocity in the x direction is 15 meters per second. Initial velocity in the y direction downward is zero. The time it takes for him to reach the ground here is going to be the same for both of these. And we know the acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared. The acceleration in the y direction, it's falling, so it's going to be gravity, negative 10 meters per second squared. The delta x is 25. The question is, what is delta y and what is delta t right there? So we want the vertical distance and the time. So I'm going to first start off by um, figuring out what is the time. Now, in the previous problems, we did a lot where we used the y value because we knew the height. We could figure out, just like you're dropping the water balloon on my head, we could use this height right here to figure out delta t. We can't do that here because if we start off with delta y equals 1 half gt squared, well, we don't know time and we don't know delta y. So let's start off with the other equation, the fact that delta x equals your average velocity times delta t. We know the average velocity in the x direction is the same thing as the initial velocity in the x direction, or 15 meters per second. We know that the displacement is 25 meters, and now we can use that to figure out delta t. Divide both sides by 15, you get 25 meters over 15 meters per second equals delta t. And now we can solve for delta t. And you got 1.6 repeating for your time in seconds, okay? So that's your delta t, 1.6 seconds. And now we're going to put it in to find out delta y. So delta y equals 1 half times negative 10. That's meters per second squared. I'm just not writing the units because of the space on this paper. And then time squared is going to be 1.6 squared. So Sorry if you can hear that music in the background. So I'm in a parking lot and some guy's really jamming out to it. So 1.6 squared, I got 2.7 repeating. And then times that by negative 5, because 1 half times negative 10 is negative 5. And I get negative 13.8 repeating. That is your change in y. The actual height of it, though, has got to be a positive height. So we know that the actual height vertical distance is 13.8 meters. Our time is 1.6 repeating seconds there. All right, so that's your answer number 12. All right, as I finish up that problem, I just realized I start with number 12 and not where we left off, but that's okay. I'll just work backwards and go 12, 11, 10, 9. So Number 11 says, the Mars rover tries to jump a crater on Mars, which has a gravitational acceleration of one-third of Earth's gravity. It is launched horizontally with a speed of three meters per second off the top of the crater, which is only a meter 0.95 tall. 
determine the time it takes for the rover to land and how far it travels horizontally from the crater's edge. I'm going to pause the recording and make a drawing. I want you to pause it and try to make a drawing as well. All right, so here's my drawing. I've got the Mars rover. Here we are on a crater on Mars. We know that this thing is 1.95 meters tall. We don't know delta x, but we know the initial velocity is 3 meters per second. Now I want you to pause the video and write out your givens and your unknowns. Separate them by x and y direction. All right, so this is what it should look like. We've got the initial horizontal velocity is 3 meters per second. Initial vertical velocity is 0. Acceleration does not, uh, well, the acceleration stays at zero in the x direction because the velocity does not change as it moves horizontally. But vertically, it gets faster as it falls, but not quite as fast as it does here on Earth. It says it's one third of Earth. So if we let Earth be 10, if we divide it by 3, we get Mars' acceleration. So it's going to be negative 10 third meters per second squared. The delta x is unknown. So is the delta t. Remember, delta t is what connects the vertical and the horizontal directions there. And then we know that it's falling downward in the negative direction. It's 1.95 meters high. So it's going to be negative 1.95 meters for its displacement. Now I want you to pause the video. See if you can write out the equation to solve for delta t. Which equation would you use? And then try to figure out delta x after you find delta t. Pause the video and then come back and see if you got the answer right. All right, so there are two equations that we're going to use here. One is that we know delta x equals your velocity times delta t. This is average velocity. And then that delta y equals 1 half gt squared. Now, we know g to be, in this case, negative 10 over 3 times 1 half times our delta t squared equals negative 1.95. And now we can solve for t here. So 1 half times negative 10 thirds gives me negative 10 sixths. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 6 tenths to cancel that out. And so I end up with negative 6 tenths times negative 1.95 equals t squared. So we're going to punch this part right here into our friend the calculator. And that gives me 1.17 equals t squared. Square root both sides and you get the time to be 1.08 seconds. So that's my time, 1.08. And that's what I'm going to substitute over here on that equation I drew on the right. So this goes in as 1.08. Our average velocity they told us was 3 meters per second. Multiplying those two, you get delta x. And I'm just using the value I had in the calculator for the time, 1.081665, bunch of stuff there, times 3 gives me 3.24. This is in meters. So the distance is 3.24 meters. The time is 1.08 seconds. This one, an object lands 420 meters from a bridge that was thrown from horizontally. The height of the bridge is equal to half the distance it was traveled. Determine the velocity at which it was thrown. So I want you to draw a picture and then write out your givens and your unknowns and then check back here and see if you got that part right. So pause the video now. All right, so it should look something like this. I've drawn a bridge here and just for artistic effect, I put some water under the bridge. Um, this object is being thrown horizontally and it's gonna land 420 meters away. I don't know if they're trying to be tricky here or what with this question. It's not too tricky. It says the height is half the distance total it traveled. What traveled 420? That means the height is 210. So filling out your givens and your unknowns, we don't know the initial velocity of x. That's what we're trying to figure out right here, the initial velocity in the x direction. 
we know the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. Like all these problems, the acceleration in the x is zero. We know that this is going to be a constant velocity as it travels in the horizontal direction. In fact, if you kick this thing off with no gravity, it goes at a constant rate forever this way because there's nothing to speed it up or slow it down left or right. So the only thing that makes it stop is the fact that it's being pulled down as it falls, so it's got to stop when it hits the ground. Now, it says delta x equals 420. Got that down. We know that the delta y is negative 210. Why is it negative? Because it starts out right here. We're letting down be negative, and it's falling in the negative direction. And then delta t is the same for both of these, but it's also unknown. So there are two main equations we use on this. Pause the video, see if you can set those equations up and figure it out, and then come back here. All right, you should have paused it. There are two main equations. One is in the x direction, and that's the fact that delta x equals the velocity in the x direction times delta t. And then we have delta y equals 1 half gt squared. So those are the two equations that we mainly use. I don't know initial velocity and delta t. And see, this one requires initial velocity and delta t. So I'm going to try to look at it. this one. It has delta y. I know that. I know gravity. I don't know delta t, though. So I can use this equation on the right to figure out delta t, just like the ones we've done before. So we've got negative 210 meters equals 1 half times negative 10 times delta t squared. So this gives me negative 5 times t squared equals negative 210. Divide both sides by negative 5, and I think that gives you 42. And then square root both sides. And so square rooting both sides, I get 6.48 seconds equals the time. Now I'm going to go back and substitute that in over here. I'll change color so it doesn't look quite as busy. So delta t I know as 6.48. I don't know, let's see here, do we, we don't know the initial x velocity. But I do know delta x is 420 meters. So divide both sides by 6.48. And I get 64.8. meters per second as the initial x velocity there. Okay. Let's look at the first one on this worksheet. It's the one I should have done first, but I was doing these backwards by accident. Chris is standing on a table so that when he throws a tennis ball, he throws it 2.45 meters above the ground. So we've got some table. Chris is standing on it. And this spot right here where he throws the ball, so here's our table. It's a gigantic table. Right, we can have that. This distance right here is 2.45 meters. And so he launches this ball, and it goes like this. Kaplunk. And they say he's able to throw it with a velocity of 200, and, oh, not 212 meters per second. 200 would be pretty nice. Determine the distance it will land on its initial bounce. So the distance from the table to right here. So pause the video, write out your givens and your unknowns. So right here we've got our unknowns, that's what's in the boxes. We know that the initial velocity in the x direction is 12 meters per second. Initial in the y is zero. The x velocity does not change. Remember, acceleration is a change in velocity, so this is going to be zero. In the y, though, this thing is speeding up as it falls downward. It's falling. Every second it falls, it's falling 10 meters per second faster per second. So that's our acceleration in the y direction. The displacement in the y direction is 2.45 meters. It's actually negative 2.45 meters. Why? Because it starts right here, and then it moves in the negative direction if we let downward be negative. So unknown is time to both. That time is going to be the guy that connects the horizontal and the vertical. And the displacement, that's what the question is asking for. So once again, same two equations we've been using. Write them down. Try to substitute your values in. And then come back after you get done pausing the video and doing that and check to see if you got it right. 
So we've got two equations. If I use the delta x equation, sometimes we do use that first. I think one of these problems in the homework, we did that. The problem with doing that one first is I don't know delta x right here, and I don't know delta t. So it's two unknowns in the problem, so I can't start with this equation on the left. If I look at the equation on the right, I don't know delta t, I know gravity, and I know delta y. So I'm going to use that equation right there to figure out what delta t is. Substituting for delta y, I get negative 240, no, 2.45 equals 1 half times negative 10 times t squared. So this becomes negative 5. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And then square rooting both sides, you get 0.7 equals the time, 0.7 seconds. And now that I know that's 0.7, I can solve for delta x. So you get 0.7 seconds. The initial velocity is 12 meters per second. And then that gives me delta x. So times 0.7 by 12, I get 8.4. 8.4 meters equals your delta x. All right. Well, hopefully this video helped you. Remember, tomorrow when you do your quiz, you need to make sure of a couple things. You want to make sure that you're drawing pictures. You'll get points taken off if you don't. Listing your givens in your own known chart here, points taken off if you don't. Writing out your equations, points off if you don't. Showing where you substitute into your equations and the work for it. So all of that should be shown. Even if you get the right answer right here, it's going to be wrong if you don't show all this. There's a lot of mess down this paper, and I want to see it all tomorrow and all your problems on your quiz. So hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.